वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अपर्णा वाटवे फैकल्टी ऑफ टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक टू यू अबाउट एग्रीकल्चर एज अ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द पेपर ऑन एनवायरमेंट एंड सोसाइटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट डिफरेंट प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर हाउ द इन्फ्लुएंस द ह्यूमन्स चेंज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमन्स is something that we will be talking about different types of practices are part of the settled as well as shifting cultivation in india we will be looking at it from regional perspective along with this we will look at what are the changes in current practices of agriculture and what are the challenges that are faced by agricultural practitioners that is farmers in the rural india humans have been using natural resources in their own environment for several centuries these natural resources include biodiversity land and water it was very important for humans to learn to make use of them to get food water and shelter the practices that humans have developed to make use of natural resources in a sustainable manner are known as natural resource management practices they are defined formally as the practices for sustainable utilization and conservation of natural resources ensuring nutritional and environmental security for present and future generations around 8500 bc humans started to cultivate grains instead of collecting food from the wild this happened in an area which is known as the fertile crescent which is today's modern day turkey egypt israel by 7000 bc humans began to domesticate animals such as sheep pigs and cattle since then many innovative practices of cultivation and livestock rearing have been established but the term agriculture was coined much later only during 15th century agriculture is the cultivation of land for effective crop growth and raising of livestock farmers engage directly in agriculture by preparing soil and planting crops harvesting those crops and preparing them for sale in the market is also a part of agricultural practices farmers also grow fodder to grow the livestock monoculture is the cultivation of a single species of crop polyculture is the cultivation of multiple crops at the same time silviculture is the cultivation of tree crops agriculture helped humans to settle down in one place it also led to formation of surplus grains which allowed humans to do many other activities we can argue that the growth of art the growth of different civilizations happened only when surplus food was available agriculture expands into new areas and takes place of natural ecosystems but then they are specialized agro ecosystems they comprise domesticated species of plants as well as animals hunter gatherers hunted their prey and obtained food directly farming required people to work longer hours for the same amount of food but farming increased food security as farming spread competition for resources particularly land and water increased consequently conflicts between communities for control of these resources also increased agriculture led to narrowing of human food base today wheat rice potato sugarcane form a major part of cultivated crops only a handful of millets constitute the rest animal raising depends primarily on cattle pigs poultry and sheep agriculture provided secure access to food the complex cultures of today that were free to pursue science and other activities all came only when agriculture became well established practice there is a vast diversity of agricultural practices in different regions of the world today they can be broadly divided into settled cultivation and shifting cultivation each of these cultivations has many regional variations settled agriculture is practiced in most parts of the world today in this an area is cleared of natural vegetation soil is prepared for cultivation of desired species 
and same farm is worked for many years. Plow is the signature technology of the settled cultivation. The first plows were developed in Mesopotamia about 6000 years ago. This allowed use of animal labor and reduced the need for manual labor in farming. Practices such as crop rotation, manure additions are also employed in settled cultivation to maintain soil fertility. Irrigation practices are used to boost crop growth. Water courses can be diverted into farms in addition to the rainwater. Water from ground sources can be also accessed wherever possible. Dams and reservoirs had to be built to increase the irrigation for settled agriculture. In the plains of India, settled cultivation spreads over states of Punjab and Uttar Pradesh in large areas. Farming in the flood plains of the river benefits from water as well as enrich nutrients from the river floods. Innovative practices have been used to increase the productivity of settled agriculture in different areas. It can be now practiced even in the mountain areas or where flat land is scarce. In India, settled cultivation extends over Uttar Pradesh and Punjab states in large areas. All along the rivers, in the floodplain areas, agriculture was practiced in a settled form. This was enriched by the nutrients that were always coming from the river floods. In hilly areas, agriculture is practiced along the hill slopes by making small terraces. Farmers make these terraces by building bunds of soil and earth. This allows cultivation even in very difficult terrains. These flat areas are called terraces and are used normally for growing crops such as potatoes and vegetables. We can see this in Uttarakhand, higher regions of Himalaya such as in Sikkim and in Himachal Pradesh and also in the parts of Northeast India. Terraces are useful in many ways. They stop the soil from getting washed downhill. We can also allow water to go through these terraces making use of maximum amount of rainwater. Crops such as rice, wheat, barley and potato are grown in these farms. In these farms, use of animal labors is very difficult, but the productivity of the land can be increased by adding manure from dung. Another system of increasing productivity of terraced agriculture is by employing a method called as rice and fish farming. In this, fish are grown in the paddy fields at the same time as rice crop or after it. Fish can be introduced by people or they can be natural which come from the flows of the different streams. This is mainly seen in the northeast of India in the states of Nagaland and Manipur. Wild fish are guided into rice fields by keeping entrances to fields open and the buns low. They can be also attracted to the fields by placing branches in them to provide shelter for the fish fingerlings. Parts of the fields can be deepened to allow secure sanctuaries for the fish. These fish may be harvested from rice field by using fishing hooks, nets or fish traps. The easiest method is to simply let the field go dry and then collect the fish. In this case, people build terrace farms, allow water to stagnate into it and then allow fish fry into the farm. Now it is possible to harvest the fish directly by catching them or collecting them from the pond or sometimes at the end of the rainy period fields are allowed to dry and the fish can be totally collected. In another way people make small nalas which allow the fish to grow into some areas next to the field and they can be remaining there for longer periods. This increases the food security of the people. Growing fish in the rice fields serves two purposes. The fish eat up the weeds and protect the crop. At the same time, the manure from the fish actually adds nutrients for the crop. This is a good method of organic cultivation as farmers need not put weedy sides and do not have to put pesticides otherwise they will kill the fish. So this is the best method of sustainable agriculture in some of the mountain areas. It has been practiced for many centuries all over Southeast Asia. China, Taiwan, 
Indonesia, Vietnam have always had it. But looking at its importance, countries such as European countries have also now adopted it. Agroforestry or agro-silviculture is a land use management system in which trees or shrubs are grown around or among crops or pasture land. It combines shrubs and trees in agricultural and forestry technologies. This creates biodiverse as well as productive and sustainable land use systems. A mix of annual and perennial herbs, shrubs and tree crops are grown together. This maximizes the yield even from a small plot of land. People grow fodder, fruit, medicine and fuel wood in the same small plot of land. Sometimes farmers who want to try new crops such as new vegetables actually introduce them experimentally in the home gardens and then take it to other farms in later stages. Home gardens are seen in many parts of Northeast Indian states. In the states of Nagaland and Manipur, home gardens is a very well established practice. People grow home gardens just next to their houses. Men, women as well as children can grow whatever different crops that they find all around them. This is one of the most interesting practices which allows diversity of food sources just next to your home. Plantation of different kinds is often combined with livestock rearing. The manure from the li livestock such as cattle helps to add nutrients to the field. Other kind of silvicultural practice is cultivation of cardamom in the forest areas of Sikkim, coffee plantations in the Kodagu regions of Karnataka. In both these cases, the forest trees are allowed to be maintained on the land. Only the undergrowth is cleared and different crops are planted. Although this becomes a productive system, at the same time the forest trees allow spaces for forest birds and forest mammals. This allows protection of forest biodiversity at the same time as getting crops. So far we had seen how different types of settled cultivations are practiced all over India. Now we are going to look at a very specialized practice which is called as the shifting cultivation. Shifting cultivation has been practiced in many countries and in India at least for thousands of years. It was mostly seen in mountain areas and can be practiced only there for a specific reason. In case of forested areas in rainforest, the soil quality is poor. It requires addition of nutrients constantly. However, when crops are grown, vegetation has to be cleared and then the soil nutrient level falls down in another one or two years. If it's a small area, it can be revegetated soon and by that time people grow crops in other areas. If the area is left as it is, it is called as a fallow area. In the fallow areas, natural vegetation grows and adds nutrient to the soil. In shifting cultivation, a lot of labor is required for manual cutting of the trees. Trees are cut down and stored for future use as fuel and timber. Burning is done at the time of the year when the climate is dry enough to allow burning. People take care not to allow the fire to spread into healthy forest. Fire breaks can be made in many places. Crops are then planted by using digging sticks. Shifting cultivation is a practice of polyculture. A different type of crops are grown together and this is much more reliable than monoculture. It allows more fruit production which is necessary for the household. In shifting cultivation, special indigenous varieties of rice, millet and vegetables have been used. They have been created by people for generations, specifically for use in the June fields. Normally some types of rice and some types of millet are cultivated in this cultivation. Because of this practice, it is called a slash and burn cultivation. 
in this practice plow is never used because it happens in areas which are too difficult for the livestock to be used for manual labor this technology is used in many places of india in many different times in case of central india tribals like baigas practice dahiya cultivation on small plots of lands and cleared it they cultivated millets and then moved on in another 3 or 4 years time in case of southeast asia this system has been perfected in a very different way in this case people grow one plot leave it fallow and move on to the other areas they come back to the same plot which they had left fallow sometimes after 8 to 10 years by that time the first plot has regenerated enough nutrients to be cleared and used again this is called as swidden agriculture in northeast india it is known as jhum cultivation the people who practice it are called jhumiyas jhum cultivation was a very well established practice in the past along with it where people who made decisions about where to jhum which plots to cut what kind of crops to grow in that and there was a lot of traditional knowledge associated with the whole practice of jhuming in recent times the number of people doing jhuming increased it led to depletion of the forest and therefore shifting cultivation became less productive than in the past recently there have been many efforts by local people and also by the state governments to increase the productivity of the fallow areas they have planted different types of tree crops for timber for fruit which can be grown in the fallow areas and whatever products from them can be then sold in the market or used in the home itself each individual system of shifting cultivation is unique and must be managed under its own set of circumstances within the system at any given time most of the fields are in varying degrees of recovery each field has slightly different community of plants in effect the presence of a whole series of fallow fields in different stages of succession increases the biotic diversity of the agricultural system it provides increased opportunity for resource use good fallow management is the key to successful shifting cultivation or jhuming in northeast area the knowledge of people associated with this also needs to be protected kumri sheti in the western ghats and dahiya cultivation in the central india very soon exhausted the forest resources many times this time of cultivation has been banned by the government even in the british time and even today it has been discouraged but what is required is to add to the productivity of these areas because this is the only type of cultivation that can be done in high hills and mountain ranges one of the innovative practices for increasing productivity of the shifting cultivation is known as alder based farming alder is scientifically known as alnus nepalensis it's a tree which has a fungal association which allows it to fix nitrogen in the soil in fake and kohima district of nagaland alder trees were grown in terrace cultivation as well as shifting cultivation fallows this allows the tree to grow and add biomass to the soil as well as adds nutrients especially nitrogen to the soil which leads to better management of soil nutrients this increases the productivity of the crops all the farming practices of india change a lot since 1960s this was because of what is known as green revolution a new kind of agricultural practices in which mechanization was introduced high yielding crop varieties were introduced which demanded more fertilizer and more water norman borla an american scientist was able to grow high yielding crop varieties by hybridization these were disease resistant they had more production and therefore increased the food security of the area in case of india wheat and rice crops and their new varieties were grown all over india as a part of green revolution technology 
Because of this, food production increased, which was very necessary at the time because we needed food for the growing population. We also needed to build food surpluses because there were regular droughts in the country. However, the demanding crops led to more and more use of groundwater, which was not good for the drought prone areas. They also added a lot of fertilizers, weedicides, pesticides during the cultivation of the crops, which led to the deterioration of soil. After Green Revolution, there was a distinct difference in how cultivation would be done by large farmers who were able to spend money on growing cash crops and the other crops were grown by subsistence farmers normally at a very low productivity. Today, Green Revolution is coming under criticism from various types of people. This is mainly because of the very exploitative land and soil management that was required for Green Revolution. Search is on again for the traditional methods in which organic farming was practiced. People are taking a relook at different types of terrace farming, joom farming, in which people have managed traditional crop varieties, but mainly at subsistence levels. If we can increase the productivity by using innovative technologies, all the old traditional practices can be rejuvenated and used for food security. Today, agriculture faces a lot of challenges. We require larger amounts of food to fulfill basic food needs. But change in practices of agriculture led to actually decrease of food security for subsistence farmers. At the same time, mining, industrialization, urbanization are all claiming lands which were meant for agriculture. Farming is still the main source of livelihood for most of the people of India. Almost 70% of rural population depends entirely on farming. But as the productivity of the farming is becoming less and less, these people's livelihoods are at threat. We need to use appropriate technology to make farming productive again. So far in this lesson, we have covered different types of agricultural practices in India. We have looked at settled cultivation and its variation in the mountain regions. We have also looked at shifting cultivation and its variations in central and northeast India. Most important part we have looked at are the changes in agriculture which were brought about by green revolution technologies. Many of the cultivation practices of agriculture are today facing challenges because of social, political and also environmental causes. How do we increase the productivity of the agriculture? How do we support the basis of agriculture which is going to be important for rural India? There is a lot of debate and discussion today going on about how productivity of agriculture can be increased. At the same time, one has to look at the needs of the farmers and other communities which are dependent entirely on agriculture. The government is giving different types of schemes and programs just to improve agriculture and its productivity. It is important that we look at organic ways of sustainable cultivation and help people to rejuvenate the traditional methods of agriculture which are very friendly towards land, water and biodiversity. This lecture was just a brief introduction to agriculture as a natural resource management practice in India. If you have found this interesting, you can take a look at the e-text. You can also take a look at the essential reading which accompanies this lecture. In this, we have given key references which describe agriculture and related practices. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture and we will meet again for the next. Thank you.